Hello and welcome to my VV Beta graphics tutorial. My name is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. Uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to play with a uh, simple agent, which is a node inside Field Trip. And by using this, it's basically sort of like a particle spline simple agent. I don't know what it is, but by connecting it spline uh, buffer, you can actually create this kind of like particle through it. And the good, cool thing about it is that uh, using uh, VF3D nodes, which is vector field 3D uh, nodes, you can actually connect sort of like noise into it. So we learned how to do combine SDF with box and spheres and noise and create this kind of like geometry. And by using that technique and combining that together with simple agent, you can actually create this kind of particle visual that's been uh, affected by the vector field uh, so yep uh, this is how the patch looks like at the moment it's actually quite simple um, so yeah let's get through it so first of all I always forget to do this at the beginning but okay so let's get started uh, first of all just delete the entire node because uh, we're going to create everything from scratch uh, I'll just delete everything uh, okay, as uh, like usual, first thing first, uh, we'll need a render and the camera and the preview and everything you need. I'll just set the resolution to 1080. Okay, so let's start from here. Uh, first of all, what we'll need is we'll create a combined SDF. Uh, so we'll use combined SDF SF3D, which is the third one. Uh, this one and then we'll have we need a ray marching basic as well as usual and then we'll need a box for now so box SDF which it will be this one and also noise SDF oh no SF3D SF3D so this one so we'll be combining these two at the moment the size in default is 0 0.08 so we'll press alt right click and reset everything to one. Uh, the position is zero to the zero, so we'll combine these to the combine SDF, and then we'll change the mode from union round to different chamber, or maybe I'll use the intersex chamber. Okay, so we're done setting up. So we'll connect this one to ray marching basic, and then we'll connect this one to renderer. So this would be the shape that we're going to be using. I want to tweak a little bit because right now it's a bit too noisy. What I will do here, I'll decrease the amplitude to one, and I also on oh no, frequency to one, and then I'll decrease the amplitude to quite low. Okay, so this is a really nice shape that I got. A little bit lower maybe, and I also want this to be animated, so I will use an inter inter. Uh, differential differential uh, oh yeah integrate differential this one so we'll be using integrate differential and then I'll increase this one to 0 0.02 and then I'll put this one to the noise domain offset so by doing this you can have this domain uh, noise SDF uh, keep moving so that the shape keeps changing. So this is the first step. Um, what we'll be doing next is we'll connect a sprite buffer because we'll be generating a sprite. So these are the particles. So we'll be have we will need this, and then we'll be connecting a simple agent with this today's topic. So simple, simple agent, there's two different types, simple agent VF2D and VF3D. We'll be using the VF3D one because we want things to be in 3D. And VF actually means vector field. So we, we, we'll be using this. And for this one, we'll need a VF vector field 3D input, which will basically be sort of like what kind of turbulence or like noise you want to add vector field. And then we also need a seed position, so where are these particles emitting and how it will be affected. So first of all, we'll meet, create a grid spread. Uh, I think this one is included inside. Yeah, it's in default. I'll be using this one. 
and then I'll increase the resolution to just for now 20 to 20 to 20 I mean it depends on your machine spec if it gets too heavy please decrease these ones and I'll connect the size XYZ as same as this one so the SDF so we have the same we have the particles in the same area as this noise so we'll connect this one to seed position 3d buffer but right now this is not connectable and that's because we need a dynamic buffer 3d we'll connect this one here oh this one dynamic buffer 3d this one so we're connecting this one to the seed 3d position and let's see what happens so we'll try connecting this one to the sprite buffer this one is a 3d buffer position so we can connect it directly to sprite buffer and by doing this we should be able to uh, render a sprite based on simple agent but right now we're not seeing anything and that's because uh, we need to specify the spread count and to do so I'll use a count node count 3d and oh no, a count count value and then we'll count the amount of grid spread but right now this is I think yeah it's, it's a total of XYZ so we would have to divide this with 3 so I connect 3 here and then connect the count here and then we'll so this is the particle amount that we need so then we'll be connecting this one to spread count and also the spread count of sprite buffer okay so now we got something coming out uh, I think right now the sprite, uh, sprite uh, size is too big so it, it decreased this to 0 .00, 0 0.005 to a decent amount and I'll also add a blend node for ray marching because right now I want it to be sort of like transparent so blend node which is the render state this one uh, not the advanced but this one and then I'll change the blend mode to blend and then I connect this one here right now you don't really see an input pin but there's this input called render state and we should be able to connect that here okay by doing this we should be able to control the alpha of ray marching basic which is right here uh, just a little bit higher so here and then we'll decrease the alpha to 0 0.2 or something 0 0.2. okay so now it's transparent uh, but right now we're not seeing uh, we're just seeing these sprites uh, emitting from wherever and that's because we haven't set any noise via volume uh, vector field input and also sprite agent has a few different inputs which is important which is this maximum distance from seed position and the other one is the step size default well they'll be explaining these later on but for right now just just uh, output these ones so last thing we have to do here is we have to connect a vector field 3d and that's gonna be the one from here so we want to connect this one but because this one is a sign oh no surface field 3d we have to convert that as a vector field and that's quite easy we just have to connect the node code gradient this one converts a vector uh, uh, surface field to a vector field so by using this we should be able to connect uh, the surface field to a vector field okay so we got something right here but right now I think it's emitting to outside and I want to keep the particles inside it and to do so we just have to uh, uh, right click the invert node right here by doing this it keeps staying inside the SDF so as you already see we sort of got these particles following the surface but I think they're too close to each other so they're hitting we need to fix that up and that's where this maximum distance fee, distance from seed position and step side default works so step side default is about the speed of these particles so if we decrease this to 0 0.001 it gets slower and if you increase this to higher value it keeps moving really fast so we'll keep this one to 0 0.001 really really low and then uh, maximum distance from seed position is as it's saying so 
I set these particles to emit from this grid position, right? So, but it's moving through this vector field. So it's getting affected by the vector field. And right now, if it goes uh, 0 0.75 far, then the particle will respawn. But I think that's too high for now. So I'll set it to 0 0.5 or maybe lower. So as you see right now, as much as lower it gets, you can sort of see this grid position where the particles are emitting. So you can tweak like how far you want this particle to go and come back and also how fast you want things to move. So right now we're already quite sort of like seeing a really nice result from like the particles following the surface. I'll decrease the size a little bit of the particles. Uh, 0 0.002 maybe. Yeah, so it looks a little bit better. And I also changed the uh, ray marching basic technique to uh, ray marching normal because it has a color and looks better. Okay, so we're getting really close. So this is basically what it is. A simple agent allows you to input a, a vector field and apply sort of like a vector field to a particle's position, which is quite an interesting thing. And by using this, so if I decrease, for example, right now the noise is uh, too wide, but if we increase, for example, the frequency to two, then we start seeing that these particles are moving a bit different than how it used to be. Oh, and another trick that I found out is we, if we set the maximum distance from seed position to zero, it stays at the default position, right? But if we increase the step size default, It looks like it's moving, but it's actually not. But uh, the particles are, rather than emitting from the grid position, because it's too fast, you don't see that it's moving to the through the vector field. This is this might be a closer result to what I want. So this is basically what I wanted to share. So by changing, for example, the combine as if right now is the intersect chamber, but if we change the different chamber, it takes a bit of time to load, but it gives you a different result. So you can actually play around with this and find out a good result, decent result that you want to hit. Maybe we can change it to union round, but union round is something that combines. So now, now the noise vector field, uh, noise SDF is going all the way through the renderer and this is probably not the result I want so I'll stick in a different chamber yeah so this is basically it if you increase for example the resolution to, for, my computer handles this so I'll set it to like 40, 34, 34, 34 and then you can actually get this kind of like uh, pretty high res particle following the surface and uh, I mean we can keep tweaking this quite a lot if we uh, decrease the shape to zero we can have no, zero is too low if we make it lower we can actually see that it's really really following the this uh, SDF but I just want this one to be a little bit higher if we change the amplitude for example it also gives you a really different result. So if you can, you can keep tweaking this amplitude to make a really interesting result. And also one important thing, if your particles stop emitting by uh, changing this value, make sure that you right click the reset all for simple agent. Then all the particles should re-emit again. Sometimes it just disappears, doesn't come back. In that case, just reset everything to get everything back. Okay, and one last tip. So there's this node called a uh, vector field arrow, which is this one. I'll put it back here. Vector field arrows. And this one is quite handy. So you can visualize your vector field. And so right now this gradient is outputting the vector field 3D. And we want to know what kind of vector field is applied to it, right? So to do so, we can connect this VF3D output to vector field arrows, and we can connect that to group. And we can see what kind of vector field is applied. And I think right now the arrows are too big. 
that's probably because I'm I think this one should go back to 0 0.5 okay so as you see now I got this vector field arrows displayed and I'll just just in case I'll, I'll delete the ray marching basic because it's a bit annoying uh, So as you see, these arrows are pointing. So it's pointing all the particles to stay inside. If I change the invert, it goes outside. Uh, so these are the ones trying to stay, let the particles stay inside. And if you go inside, you can see all these arrows are pointing to a different direction, which means they're forcing the particles to uh, move to that direction. So. So yeah, we, by changing these values, we can sort of like see that this vector field is changing. Oh no, it doesn't change here. Uh, so if we change the invert, we can let this particle go outside. Or if you uh, turn on the normalize, uh, it changes a little bit as well. So yeah, this is it. I mean, the simple widget is really handy. So if you want to do some sort of like real-time vector field effect for the particles, I think this is uh, the thing that you should be using, so I wanted to share that. Okay, that was it for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.